Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to detail one of the most recognizable and legendary Crips ever, Stanley Tookie Williams. Tookie was born on December 29, 1953 in Louisiana. Some years later, Tookie and his mother were moved to Los Angeles on the west side of South Central to be exact. Tookie's early childhood in South Central, growing up, Tookie would see a lot and experience a lot of things, seeing a lot of drinking, drug use, addiction, gambling, and a lot of violence. Tookie having a lot of free time, with his mom working several jobs to support the family and working long hours, Tookie would start to participate in things going on in his neighborhood in his early teenage years. That included robbing, fighting, and anything to get some money. This would make him become tough and a good fighter, and becoming a part of a dangerous lifestyle. Around the mid and late 1960s, crime was on the rise in urban communities, and many small neighborhood gangs would pop up. In the United States, the biggest movement for the African Americans would form in the 60s, and that would be the Black Panthers. They would become well established by the 60s and the early 70s, becoming a powerful movement, giving African American structure and a sense of power and identity. The Black Panthers started branches all over America, and Los Angeles would have its own branch as well. This would have a heavy influence on the youth in LA, making them move militant and follow the wave of the Panthers. But the Panthers movement dying out, with many leaders being killed, jailed, and some becoming addicts, or just fading away from the man bringing them down as a whole, the youth in LA will form several youth gangs of their own. By 1969, the formation of the Crips was starting in LA. By this time, Tookie in the late 1960s would begin to make a name for himself in the streets. Tookie developed a big following on the west side of South Central in the late 1960s. Tookie ran with other future Crips like Darnell Archie, Bub, Mad Dog, and a long list of other future famous Crips. Running with a dangerous crowd and being one of the most violent out his few, Tookie would get into a lot of trouble. From getting into non-stop fights, being kicked out of school, Tookie would have several stints in juvenile hall from fighting and stealing cars as well. In jail, Tookie began to lift weights and this made him more stronger physically and mentally. But to other people, this made him wildly more feared. With his new size, many people would fear Tookie and wants no parts of him. Upon being released from jail, Tookie would meet another major figure, but from the east side of South Central named Raymond Washington. Raymond Washington is credited to starting the Crips in his early teenage years. Upon this meeting, Tookie and Raymond, who were both leaders at their sides of town, would bring the Crip factions together and make their crew as allies. The east side Crips headed by Raymond Washington and the west side Crips led by figures like Tookie. The Crips would gain more and more followers. Crips would start to recruit new members all over LA. This would bring more Crip members and new gangs. They would start to expand from South Central to other nearby cities like Compton, Watts, Gardena, and several more. But many gangs wouldn't join the Crips and they would become fierce rivals. Some of the Crips early rivals were gangs like the Chain Gang, the Brims, and the Compton Pyrus, with Mac Thomas being the leader in Compton for the Crips. The Blue Rag was said to first be worn by a close friend of Tookie's named Buddha. With Buddha dying by 1973, it was said that Chris wore the Blue Rag in his honor. By 1974, Raymond Washington was sent to prison for a five-year bid. Tookie later moved to Compton, where he became a youth counselor, being like a big brother to several young Crips and an authority figure. While living in Compton, Tookie would be shot by rivals, causing him to need physical therapy. This would cause Tookie to develop a drug addiction to ease his pain. This would cause his life to later spiral, especially with personal reasons like the loss of his grandma, losing his counselor job, and not being able to do what he loved, bodybuilding. He loved being in bodybuilding competitions, but with his well-known reputation as a gang member, he wasn't allowed to. Tookie would die deeper in the streets and his addiction. By 1979, many Crips would lose their lives and many would start to go to prison. Crip leaders like Raymond Washington and Mike Thomas lost their lives during this time period. A lot of new Crip gangs would be established with the lack of leadership and not having a unity that once was in the early 70s. With this happening, many Crip sets would become rivals and start new alliances under the Crip car. By 1981, Tookie would be convicted of several robberies, which ended in many people losing their lives. It is said that Tookie held up a 7-Eleven, taking the life of a clerk inside the store. The second crime he committed, it was said that Tookie held up a motel, taking money from the register, and taking three lives. This would get Tookie the death penalty. Tookie will always claim his innocence, stating that the police framed him because his status in the Crips, and that the police always wanted to pin him to crimes. He also stated that it wasn't any evidence, including no fingerprints or the shell cases not matching his gun. 
and all African Americans were removed from being jurors at his trial. Being sentenced to the death penalty, Tookie would be put on death row and sent to San Quentin to serve his time. Tookie would be a problem for the staff and other inmates in the 80s, being an enforcer and calling shots. In 1988, Tookie would be stabbed by a former friend, Rolling 60 Crip, Little Fee. After Little Fee allegedly didn't do a task Tookie assigned him to, Little Fee got Tookie before Tookie got him. Tookie was such a problem, he was later sent to solitary confinement, and after a few years, he would later decide to change his ways. In 1994, he was released from solitary confinement and later found religion. Even though he made major steps to change, he was denied an appeal. Tookie began to write several children books, and in 1996, his first of eight books were published. His books were positive, telling kids to stay away from drugs and gangs, and what things they could do that could land them in jail like him. In 2002, Tookie would be nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. His changes garnered many supporters and helped attribute to many people urging judges to give him a life sentence instead of a death sentence, but the appeal was once again denied. In 2004, Tookie had another book called Blue Rage and a movie about his life being released starring Jamie Foxx playing Tookie. In 2005, Tookie petitioned for clemency, but this was denied by the governor after the governor said forensic evidence still linked Tookie to all his crimes. He had many people come to his defense, like rapper Snoop Dogg. Whether he or not, he will spare the life of convicted quadruple murderer Stanley Tookie Williams. It's a case that's captured national headlines primarily because of Williams' famous supporters, many from the entertainment world. NBC's James Hittori joins us tonight from outside San Quentin Prison in California. Good evening, James. Good evening, John. Governor Schwarzenegger is presumably still weighing his options in this case. There was no... But on December 13th, 2005, Tookie would be executed. Tookie was 51 years old. And in this era, Tookie is looked upon as a street legend and is highly talked about as a leader and a general to the Crips. And in his last days of life, looked upon as much more than that, but as a changed man, wanting to right his wrongs and fix a few kids' life if he could. And I learned just from Tookie Williams, rest in peace, was to master myself. He taught me this one word, sang fraud. They was about to kill this man. They was about to take this man's life. He was on death row. He was like two days away from dying. And me and him was talking. He was so calm talking to me and laughing and joking and telling me about all the great things that he'd seen in me and wanted me to do. And I said, man, how are you so relaxed right now? He said, brother, the word is saying fraud, and that's to remain calm under pressure. And when he told me that word, I started practicing that shit and started mastering myself. And I learned how to become saying fraud, to always be calm. Under this will conclude this episode. If you haven't already, make sure you check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.